Now let's get on to some harder factorising. Why is it harder? Well, this time, instead of having an x squared coefficient of 1, we now have something greater than that. For instance, this one has 5. So my rule has to change slightly. We're still trying to find two numbers that add to get the coefficient of x, but this time they also need to multiply to the product of the constant and the x squared coefficient. Let's have a go at one and see how we get on. So draw out my grid, put in the x squared term in the top left and the constant term bottom right. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get the constant times by the x squared coefficient. So negative 5, but still add to get the coefficient of x, so 4. So numbers that times to get negative 5, where well you can have negative 5 and 1, and you can have negative 1 and 5. Let's see what they add to. This is going to be negative 4, and this is going to be 4. So it's this pair here. Okay, so put my values in, and I'm going to get uh, a negative x for the negative 1, and 5x. And now let's um, factorise rows and columns. 5x squared and 5x, the common factor is 5x. Negative x and negative 1, the common factor is negative 1. 5x squared and negative x, the common factor is x. 5x and negative 1, the common factor is plus 1, and it takes positive as that is the sign of the box nearest to it. So my factorised form is 5x minus 1, x plus 1. Here's two more examples. So for this one here, let's do our grid. Now this time we've got it in terms of c's and x's, but that's fine. We still put the squared term here and the constant term here. We're still looking for two numbers that multiply to get the product of the squared term and the constant term. So it's negative 24 and that those two numbers add to get the constant, uh, the coefficient of the c term, so 10. So pairs of numbers that get negative 24, or negative 24 and 1, negative 12 and 2, um, negative 8 and 3, negative 6 and 4, and then we sort of start flipping these over, uh, negative 4 and 6, um, then we're going to get negative 3 and 8, negative 2 and 12, and negative 1 and 24. See which pair adds to get um, positive 10. That's negative 23, negative 10, uh, negative 5, negative 2, 2. Right, so we're now on the positives. 5, 10. So it's this one here, negative 2 and 12. So now let's put those into my grid. So it be negative 2c and positive 12c. Now let's factorise rows and columns. So 8c squared and negative 2c, the first column. Well, the common factor is 2c. 12c and negative 3, well, that's plus 3, taking the sign of the box nearest to it. 8c squared and 12c, well, that's 4c. And negative 2c and negative 3, well, that's negative 1. So my answer to this one is 2c plus 3 and um, 4c minus 1. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Well, the next one really is to show is that the first thing you should always look for is a common factor because the grid doesn't work if you don't take the common factor out first. So the common factor in this one is 3. So if I take that out, I'm going to get this here, which I can now use the grid to factorise. So let's get the grid out. Put the squared term in the top left and the constant term in the bottom right. I'm looking for two numbers that times to get 3 times uh, 2, which is 6, but add to get 5. So that's either going to be 6 and 1, 3 and 2, uh, negative 3 and negative 2, and negative 6 and negative 1. These add to get 7, that's not that one, but that one adds to get 5, so it's 3 and 2. Put that into my grid with some f's, so 3f and 2f. Factorise columns and rows. It's going to become f, 2f and 3, there's no common factor, so that's just 1. 2f squared and 2f, well that's 2f. 3f and 3, well that's 3. So the part I've just done, f plus 1 and 2f plus 3. But I've also got to remember to bring down this 3 here to complete it. So my final answer is 3, brackets f plus 1, brackets 2f plus 3.